What is happening, everybody? So, I got a little bit bored tonight, and I was clicking through some comments and looking at some different posts here and there, and I noticed one thing comes up pretty often when Mustang guys are talking about the Coyote platform, and that is the horsepower per cubic inch equation. That's always such a big thing. And a lot of car enthusiasts get really wrapped up in this. It's how much horsepower are you making for what cubic inch displacement? But I got to thinking about that a little bit, and I, I kind of came up to the conclusion that I'm not so sure that that stat is relevant. Although it's a sexy statistic, it doesn't really mean a whole lot. I mean, yeah, I guess it kind of means how efficient that power plant is, but there's a whole different side to that equation, and that is the weight of the power plant. In other words, how much power do you get per pound of power plant? So I decided to do a little spreadsheet and figure that out. By the way, here's that spreadsheet. This is one of those nerd alert things. I'm hoping that it's focusing. Typically it does not. <clears throat> anyway, that's what we'll be chatting about. Oh, by the way, yeah, nerd alert. This is either gonna be fairly interesting or extremely boring. It might be a combination of the two, so. Anyway, let's check out the stats and see how these engines stack up against each other. Now, the engines that I'm gonna be comparing is gonna be the Coyote, because it's the Coyote. It's the reigning horsepower per liter uh, champ as far as pony cars or you know American muscle cars are concerned, naturally aspirated, of course. Uh, but I wanna compare that to the 6.2 liter LS3. Main reason being is that it's a fairly common engine to do engine swaps with, the E-Rod engine platform and program with GM is huge with you know street rod guys and kit car guys, and it offers up a very powerful package uh, and a very small package at that. And of course, I'm gonna throw in my 392 because because Mopar, that's why. So anyway, let's see how they all stack up against each other. I have a feeling the results might be a bit surprising, by the way. So, starting out, the Coyote and the LS3 weigh nearly identical. They're within a couple of pounds of each other, and this is based off shipping weight. Now, granted, this is not with accessories or fluids or anything like that, but they both check in at around 440 pounds, give or take. Now, with an accessory drive, you could probably kick that up about another 15 pounds. Doesn't really matter, but just for the sake of argument, call it 460 pounds, just for grins. Us Mopar guys with our Iron Block 392, yeah, we're checking in at about 500 pounds shipping weight. Factor in an accessory drive and you're looking at about another 20 pounds. So 520 pounds just walking around. So let's talk about it from those terms, at least using those statistics. Uh, so your, your uh, LS3 and your Coyote are both rated at 435 horsepower. Now, I don't really want to get into the argument of which one revs higher or which one makes torque lower in the power band. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about horsepower, torque, and weight, and that's it. Um, both of them come in at the same weight. They both make the same horsepower, so they both have the same horsepower to weight figure. That horsepower to weight figure is 0.945. So basically, 94.5% of its weight is generated by the horsepower of those engines. How about the 392? Surprisingly enough, not too far back, it's about one point away at .932. So basically your all aluminum LS3 and your Coyote are only making one point difference between themselves and a 392 based on horsepower per weight. But what about the torque per weight? Well, uh, yeah, Mopar won this one, even with its iron block. Uh, the Mopar at 475 foot-pounds of torque and 520 pounds comes in at 0.913 foot-pounds of torque per pound of weight. Uh, the other two, check, well, actually the LS3 came really close. 0.91304 to a 0.91361. So by the narrowest of margins, that 392 eked out the LS3. I mean, you talk about having to get real specific. So basically identical. Although a win's a win, I'll take it. Um, the, the Ford, though, a little bit different story. At 400 foot-pounds of torque 
uh, checked in at 0.87 foot-pounds of torque per pound of weight. So not quite as efficient at moving its own weight as an LS3 or the 392. So what does all this mean? Well, basically it means that this is the other side to that argument. And the problem is, is that argument assumes, that argument being horsepower per liter or horsepower per cubic inch, that argument assumes that the smaller engine is going to be lighter, that it's going to weigh less, or that it's going to be a more efficient packaging than the engines that it's being compared to. And the fact is, in this case, it's not. It weighs as much as an engine that is, I don't know, 76 cubic inches larger in that LS3 and has, although the ability to rev higher, it's not much higher. Because if you take a look at where the engines make peak power, comparing the LS3 against the Coyote, uh, basically it's a 500 RPM difference. Roughly 6,000 RPM versus roughly 6,500 RPM. So, yeah, there's not that big of a difference there. And of course, the 392 gets its work done before six grand or thereabouts. So, again, when you look at the argument from one point of view, it can seem really lopsided. But when you look at that argument from the purpose is of simply moving weight and how it deals with uh, being a very compact and efficient power delivery system, yeah, that Coyote is not looking quite as impressive as that horsepower per cubic inch would allow you to believe. But anyway, that's just me nerding out a little bit. Hopefully that spurs up a little conversation. Post up your comments. Let me know what you think. Adios.